Uh, hey, so today I'm going to show you guys how to do your Lightwave name, uh, your spinning name in the new version of Lightwave. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is go into your class folder, uh, TIJ10, and then open up your training videos subfolder, and then go into your Lightwave folder. In there, you're going to see a layout file and a modeler fi file. The modeler is the one to use after you make your your uh, models. The layout is where you actually make your models. So you want to open up layout. And uh, so when that, when that opens up, you'll see uh, a lot of different menus and options and different shapes and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can just delete Mr. Clark's name really quickly using the lasso which is the right click or you can just go over to file and hit new object so once you've done that what you need to do is go into the text and down you'll see logo you'll click where it says my logo delete that and put your first name keep it at 500 millimeters and then there's a bunch of different font types I use Times New Roman because it's easy and I know it works there's a lot of different ones you can use but some of them won't work properly with the modeler uh, so just do that and then you'll click OK and your name will come up uh, it'll be you'll have all your different views you'll have your top view your left view your right view your behind view and your perspective view you're able to uh, move and rotate your perspective view or your top and bottom views um, to let you see what your, uh, your object looks like. And you can change each view to whatever you want. So if you want the right side to be on the bottom, you can have it over there. So once you do that, your name still just going to be uh, white. So you're going to want to lasso around it by right clicking and holding and then go to the surface editor tab. In there it will be a ball of material and that will be your color. So you're going to want to go to the little color subsection and whatever color you want to make your name just change it to that on the little circle and the, and the color picker to your left. Uh, I'm going to make my first name a, a greenish color. So I'll just make it a little bit brighter and there perfect now you just click OK and you can see a uh, little little uh, view of your material and then you just exit out and now my name will be green and I can just deselect it and you can see in the top right it it's green it has a little blue outline but that's because of the the option I have uh, for viewing it So once you're done that, you can open up your files and go to Save Object As, and then go onto your desktop and create a new folder. Uh, once you create a new folder, you can name it whatever you want. Um, just make sure you know what it's named so you don't lose track of it. And you're just going to open it up and save that file as your first name or anything that specifies that it's your first name and it's an object. So I'm just going to save mine as Ethan, make sure it's saving as an object, and now I've done my first name. So now we're going to do the same thing again with our last name, you just click new object, and then do the same thing, add logo, and then, and then I'm going to use the same font, as I did for my first name, so that for consistency. Click OK. Now I'm going to lasso around it again, select it all, and then I'm going to choose Surface Editor again, and I'm going to make the, my last name a different color. I'll make it a red, a red and green. Now I'll just exit out of that, 
and then do the same thing I did with my last one, file, save as, and make sure this one is specified as your last name object, and save it into the same folder. So I have my two files now. So once you've finished that, what you're going to want to do is click up in the top right corner, right under the uh, tab, there will be a little arrow pointing downwards. You're going to want to open up that drop down menu and click switch to layout or send object to layout, either works. But you're going to click that and your layout is going to open. So that's 180 frames of your name standing still and 300 of it moving. So altogether, you need at least 480 frames in your timeline. If you want to change how many frames you have in your timeline, you go to the right, right next to uh, your timeline, and there will be a little, uh, uh, little number there, and you'll just erase it and put your desired amount of frames right in that box, and then click Enter. So now that I have 500 frames, I'm going to go to File, Load, and I'm going to load an object into my scene. I'm going to click my first name, open that up, and you're going to see it comes up in the middle of the camera right here. And I can move it up and down and uh, left and right and farther into the, into the scene. So this camera is very limited. But what you can do is at the top here, you can change your view to perspective. Now what this will do is allow you to move around the scene and not just be restricted to the camera's view. And up the top, at the top right, you're going to notice some controls like rotate, move, and zoom. These will help you uh, look around your whole scene and get a view of what's happening behind the camera. So you're going to have your light up here, which you can move around, and your camera, which you can also move around. So you can look behind your camera and see exactly what your camera's seeing with that, uh, with the frames. Your light will not have any effect on the scene if you move it, but if you go to the top and click Modify, you can change to your Rotate tool, and you can actually change the way the light affects your whole scene. Because this isn't a linear light, it will affect everything in your scene. So I'm going to keep it pointing downwards a bit. And so you can move your name up and down, like I said in the beginning. But you can also move it uh, right and left and more uh, f like further into the scene. So if you look around, you can get a better angle on these arrows on my name. Uh, you can see that you can drag it any which way you want. And uh, so I'm going to frame it up before I load in my next name. And that should be, that should be good. Maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm going to do the same thing I do with this name. I'm going to go to load, load object, and then click my last name. I'm going to open it up, and it's going to load right into the middle right there. I'm going to see if it's overlapping because in this uh, in this assignment your names should never overlap so you have to make sure that your, your the letters never touch or else you'll, you're going to get marks taken off. So I'm going to make sure they're spaced properly and they look good and looking at the camera's point of view I think they look perfectly framed. So now what you're going to want to do is um, take a look at the bottom. There's um, three options you're going to see. Auto key on and off, create key, and delete key. What auto key does is it makes it so when you move something, it will automatically key it there. Without auto key on, I can move my name wherever I want on whatever frame, and it, and it won't save that. But if I turn auto key on it will automatically do that. Now if I don't have it on, what you can do is you can press enter and that will manually create a frame. I like to use auto key, but it's more of a personal preference. 
I would recommend not using it because you may screw up or you may not realize you're making a key and that may affect the way your animation looks. And if you want you can click delete key and that will just delete the key from your whole timeline. So I'm going to start my movements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to m move to maybe what 90 frames at least and I'm going to make a frame at 90. And what this is going to do is mi it's going to make sure that my name stays at that place un for 3 seconds. And I'm going to make it so it goes to all items. So both my first name and my last name will be affected by this key. So after I make that key, I can actually start making my motions. So I'm going to change the perspective view, and I'm going to move my first name to the right and my last name to the left. Right here, if you are not using auto key, you want to click enter, and that will manually create the key. So I'm going to now move them, uh, which way? I'll move my first name down and my last name up. And they're going to come back across the screen. And then at 225, I want them to move back into the middle of the screen. So I'm going to move them back there. And you know what? I, I want them to do a little spin. So I'm going to choose the Rotate tool under the Modify tab and that will cause them to rotate. You, you'll have a lot of different tools like sh stretch and size and uh, move and rotate, but I'd recommend just sticking to move and rotate at the moment because the, a lot of the other tools are much more advanced and you want to get a hang of software before you try using those. So right here you can see that my name is overlapping with my last name. So I'm going to want to make sure that this doesn't happen. So I'm going to move my name down and make sure that during the animation neither my first name or my last name overlap. They can go in front of each other but they cannot touch. So if I wanted I could have my last name behind my first name but I could not have my last name inside of my first name. So I'm just going to do a couple more movements. Uh, move my first name up a little bit and I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna make both of them do a little spin clockwise your rotate tool also have an axis just like your move tool so you can move it very precisely and exactly the way you want it by clicking on one of the three circles around your item So once you've finished uh, your scene, you're going to want to go to save and then go to save scene as. Find that folder that you made at the beginning of the tutorial and save your file there with something that indicates it's your scene file. So I'm just going to call mine Ethan Levine Lightwave Spinning Name. Make sure it's saving as a scene file. So now uh, we're not completely done our scene yet. What we need to do now is we need to make a background for our image or our animation. So I'm going to open up Adobe Elements, uh, Photoshop Elements 14, and I'm going to make a quick gradient background. You can, you can make the background as great as you want or as basic, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be a 2D background that will look the same no matter where your camera is looking. So keep that in mind. You won't be able to add depth using this background. You're going to want to make more models. If you want to have buildings in the background that actually move, 
You're going to want to make them in Modeler and actually manually add them to your scene. But I'm just going to go to File, uh, Loads, File, New, make blank file, uh, call it spinning name background. Now I'm going to go to preset. I'm going to, I'm just going to make it default or custom. Change it to pixels. Make sure it's on pixels. Change the width to 1280. And make sure the height is 720. And your pixels per inch is, doesn't really matter. And then you're going to create it. It's going to pop up right here. Uh, I'm just going to make a really quick one. Just take a gradient. Yeah, that one looks good. And we'll just drag across. And then I'll go back and save this again as my background. You can save it as a PSD or a JPEG. Uh, JPEGs work a little bit better with uh, the conversion software but a PSD will work. So once you've done that and it finishes saving, you're gonna wanna close out of Adobe Elements and you're gonna wanna go into your class folder. Now in your class folder, you go to the training videos tab and there should be a convert to J JPEG to TGA file online. You wanna click that link and it's gonna bring you to the site now I save mine as a PSD, so I'm gonna go into the little menu here, click image, and then find my file extension. I'm gonna select PSD from this little menu. And then I'm gonna click right here. And I'm gonna open my files, find them in my folder, and then just drag the background right onto the screen and it will automatically start converting them and it will take a minute but mine just finished so there we go and now what we're going to want to do is click download and then we're going to click save and it will take a minute to download once that's done you're just going to want to click open or open in folder and then drag that into your folder that you made on your desktop so now you have two background files, a PSD or a JPEG, and a Targa file. That's what TGA stands for. So now you're going to want to reopen layout. You're going to want to reopen your scene. So now in layout, you're going to want to go up to Windows. And you're going to click it, and you're going to get a little drop-down menu. You're going to click Ren Backdrop Options backdrop options. You're going to see a bunch of different stuff. They allow you to make a lot of different backgrounds and do a lot of stuff with them, but for what we're doing, we're just going to click compositing, and we're going to load in our background image, our, our Targa file, and we're going to see it open up right here in a second. Alright, there we go. And you'll see it's 1280 by 720. Make sure it's this or else it won't work properly. Now I'm just going to exit out of this and now my scene is completely done and I'm ready to render. So once that's loaded in you're just gonna click X and I'm just gonna finish up my scene real quick and give the three seconds at the end so that's another 90 frames so I'm gonna go to 410 make sure my names lined up properly so you can see it and just drag it to the front so it's readable and just have them sit there for three seconds and my animation looks good to me but what you want to do is change your camera view and then at the bottom your bottom right you're going to click play you're going to watch it through make sure all the motions look good make sure and nothing overlaps and all your animations are smooth and there we go. Mine is done and ready for rendering.